this is composition of municipal solid waste. MSW in India has approximate 40 to 60 percent of compostable waste. India is among those countries that produces very high organic waste and 30 to 50 percent of inert waste and about 20 to 30 percent recyclable waste. Okay, so these are the trends. So if you see how the uh, the paper waste is increasing, actually it's decreasing. Yeah, plastic waste is increasing. You can see here. Okay, but then what advantage do we have here is that because of the high organic content in municipal solid waste in Indian cities, we have higher opportunities of composting it and locally composting it in decentralized manner rather than throwing everything to the landfill. This is waste composition as city sites. As all of you said there also before in previous session also, that small towns they might produce lesser solid waste as compared to higher, uh, bigger cities. And bigger cities they produce high calorific value waste that is paper and plastic use. Uh, uh, do you understand what is calorific value? It's basically the energy that you uh, that the waste uh, releases once you burn it. And that, that's measured in kilocalories. So if you burn one kilogram of waste and you, you have uh, higher kilocalories being generated, so that has a higher calorific value. So, uh, so bigger urban centers like uh, Mumbai or, or Bangalore, they are producing higher uh, paper and plastic waste. Uh, it's a trend that we can see. And compostable also, you can see that compostable uh, material is also being generated highly by bigger cities. This is the waste composition and income that you guys just discussed. Do you see any similarities here? So blue one is low income. This is lower middle, this is upper middle and this is high income. So low income is producing high organic. Paper is higher for high income households. Plastic is more or less similar, maybe lower for lower income. Glass is higher for high income. Metal again is higher for high income and then there is other kind of material. What is, who manages what in municipal solid waste management? Okay, as I discussed before also that this is uh, the solid waste management as a sector, it's a state subject. According to constitution of India, it comes under state list. Okay, it comes under, it's a part of public health and sanitation and urban local bodies are nodal agencies to manage the solid waste management at the city level. Whereas for managing liquid waste management, liquid waste or waste water, generally we have state boards. The reason behind it why the liquid waste is being managed by state boards and why solid waste is being managed by uh, urban local bodies because there is a general uh, perception that urban local bodies they don't have capacity to conduct engineering kind of exercises or engineering kind of projects. So when they have to construct sewerage projects which are laying off sewers and constructing sewerage treatment plants, that's a uh, notion, wider scale notion that ULVs do not have the capacity, resources, financial resources, human resources to conduct engineering projects. So they are just suitable to have elementary garbage removal and garbage management uh, skills. They are just suitable to do that. Okay. So these are the functions uh, of ULB as I mentioned. Again the same thing, they are responsible for street sweeping, silt from drains, collection storage. They are also responsible for construction and demolition waste. Okay, and sanitary landfilling. What are the different financial resources that a particular ULB has? They have various principal taxes and duties. They receive grants from central government. Uh, they receive uh, loans from various bilateral and multilateral agencies. They receive loans from financial institutions like monetary, uh, like international financial institution like IMF. Uh, now there is a new, after 1990s, the government of India tried to uh, experiment with municipal bonds. So this is another source of uh, 
income for them and then the bank loans and then when it comes to building bylaws i hope you understand what is building bylaws how do you plan building so that that comes under building bylaws that is a part of town planning department which is under the urban local body okay these building bylaws also state how to manage waste how to manage solid waste liquid waste what should be the specification of septic tank which is used to manage uh, household level toilet waste and how to manage solid waste at the building level this also comes under ulb and then we have state pollution control boards to monitor and regulate different kind of waste and then we have nodal agencies at the ministry level which is ministry of environment and forest which is now ministry of environment forest and climate change ministry of urban development and this is technical institution called um, cpheo which is yeah so the this particular organization is a technical custodian of knowledge in uh, engineering and public health and water and sewage they produces lot of manuals so most of the information that you see today in my presentation is actually from their latest manual which was released in 2016 after 16 years of having old manual they recently came up with the new ma manual role of informal sector some of you mentioned that there is a role of um, you know uh, waste picker rat pickers so this is the role that informal sector plays into this entire chain of solid waste management they are very important when it comes to segregation okay although we tell we say that they are informal but they are very organized informal sector you can't say that they are not organized okay and they collect about and recycle about 10000 tons of waste in most of the cities every day they recycle about 70% of the plastic waste and 56% of all recyclable waste in indian cities okay and these are the kind of waste that they deal with plastics paper glass metals so they will be looking out for all these things either directly from your household waste or from the landfills sometimes they pick waste from the landfills also so these are the contributions by the uh, informal sector it employs huge number of people like recently i was in a workshop in trivandrum uh, and there were nepal participant uh, they so they mentioned about one example i'm pretty sure those examples you can find in india also that they used to have a one landfill in one city and government decided to shut that landfill and start new landfill in another part of the city so around that new landfill now there are 75 families that are dependent that are drawing livelihoods from that life landfill alone 75 families families as in people who are into this informal uh, waste recycling and material recovery so that kind of employment they have the ability uh, uh, to generate they they work very efficiently and uh, operate very competitively they have formal economical linkages at some point of the recycling chain uh, and the kind of environmental offsets because when they recover waste that means they ensures that again that waste doesn't go into the environmental uh, chain what are the issues and challenges there will be always issues uh, formal and informal sector government will always see them as uh something which you don't have you don't need to have at a city level and they work in unacceptable working condition most vulnerable section is women and children there is issue of child labor which is involved and there is exploitation by middle or waste merchants uh some of you also mentioned in your presentation that uh like in i think i remember in their in their presentation that segregation is not happening at household level segregation is happening in the end which is a centralized example of waste water management centralized example of solid waste management so we have two type of systems adopted across uh, cities in different parts of india one is centralized system in other one is decentralized system decentralized system uh, means that you try to recover as much as you can during the entire value chain of solid waste at the segregation at the segregation part at the collection transportation and at the landfills part but conventionally most of the cities in india are involved in centralized systems centralized systems are preferred wherever there is economies of scale is favored in terms of bigger 
systems like sanitary landfills, incineration plants because these are very big to manage and very expensive. So they are managed at centralized level. While the decentralized system or community system are composting is one example of having decentralized system and it reduces the burden of handling large volumes at centralized location. It redu reduces the cost of transportation and immediate storage. So these are the key differences uh, between centralized and decentralized. Here I have tried to uh, make a merit and challenges for centralized and decentralized system. Okay, what are the challenges in decentralized system? The major challenge in decentralized system is monitoring. So when you have a centralized system, because government has limited resources and limited human power, the centralized systems are easy to manage. Okay, it is at one location and one person can be appointed and the person can go and just check the centralized system. When it comes to decentralized system, you, did, you need more human resources, you need more skills to manage that system. So that is one of the uh, challenges in decentralized system. And also I have seen and it has been recorded many a times, the decentralized system, like if you have to establish a composting unit at a neighborhood level, there will be some opposition by the people living around and they'll oppose, uh, they might oppose about uh, that we don't want to establish a decentralized aerobic unit or composting unit near our area. So there will be some issues, conflicts in, echo, in acquiring land for that. Other advantage of decentralized unit is that material recovery can happen at each point of the value chain which we discussed. So uh, yeah, so these are the different advantages and challenges of centralized and decentralized systems. So conventional landfills that we have right now in various cities are centralized example of managing municipal, say, uh, uh, municipal uh, solid waste. As you can see that municipal solid waste was managed conventionally through the centralized system and the focus was on disposal. Collect everything and dispose to landfill. But where is the land? If you see these trends, India would be needing so much of land by the end of 2031. We don't have that much land. Specifically, in context of LAP, if you see, LAP has this particular area, Alapura has only 0.6% of vacant land. So if this city has to adopt centralized system and a landfill, where are you going to establish landfill system? So landfill systems might not be appropriate for everything. So one has to plan according to the context. And also there are there is a possibility of GHG emissions. Landfill disposal ultimately leads to methane and carbon dioxide emissions. So this is the amount of 16 metric, uh, million metric carbon dioxide uh, of methane emission is released through landfills in India. So landfills are huge contributors to GHG emissions, which is uh, responsible for climate change. And obviously there are groundwater contaminations from the landfill leachates. So when the uh, biodegradable mass or the mass that is decomposes, there will be some leachates that, will, that might go into the groundwater. These are the recent cases that have happened around landfills. This is a very famous case in Delhi that happened, I think, 2017. That entire landfill, Ghazipur landfill, it collapsed. There was a huge heap of waste and that collapsed and that killed about two people. And this is again somewhere in Ahmedabad, which the heaps of garbage is constantly uh, catching fire. So landfill sites are biohazards, in a, in a, in, they are hazards actually for the city. Yeah, so we come to exercise 4. So what you have to do, if you understood centralized and decentralized system, you have to tell me that if your city has a centralized system or decentralized system. And if you can, and if you uh, are able to identify different components of centralized and decentralized systems. Okay. And second thing you have to identify if there are any cha challenges you can identify. Like if, you, if your city has a landfill, what are the challenges? If your city has a collection system, what are the challenges? And does your city has a landfill or dumping ground? And if, it, you, if you can identify certain issues and challenges associated, be it environmental issues, be it related to social issues, uh, informal sector, livelihood issues, groundwater issues. Uh, so all those issues you have to identify.